Everyone knows that producing a weekly, hour-long action television series is serious work. But sometimes it's even harder than it looks. With the pressure to move the action along on a short production schedule, things can slip by even the most watchful eyes. Here's a guide to that side of Starsky and Hutch. In Savage Sunday, when the parking attendant phones the police station, the clock reads 412. And when the guys are told about it in the captain's office, Hutch says they have only 12 minutes before the car explodes at 448. How much time we got? It's 12 minutes to five. So what were they doing for those 40 minutes? It's one plane and one with uh, mustard and onions and relish and sauerkraut and chili. Keep your eyes peeled for this one. In Death Ride's cornfield shootout, Starsky's gun is emptied. The slide stays open, indicating that there are no more rounds in the gun. But he keeps shooting anyway. Hey, what the hell is this? Get out, George! Take George, will you? And it happens again when he's trying to get George out of the cab. Come on, George! Come on, George! Go, go! In the episode entitled Texas Longhorn, Huggy Bear sends Starsky and Hutch to see someone called the Angel for information. I made you contact with the Angel. The what? 11.06 Summers. Tell us. He tells them she's at 11.06 Summers. But when Starsky and Hutch go into the royal apartment, the address is clearly 312. In the fix, when Starsky is rescuing Hutch in the alley, he has a shootout with Monk who puts two bullets through the Torino's windshield and shatters the passenger side window with another blast. Immediately following the scene, Starsky and Hutch are seen arriving at Ben Forrest's home. Come on, Forrest, try it! Obviously having come directly there from the shootout in the alley. Yet somehow, the windshield on the Torino has repaired itself and the passenger door has grown a brand new side window. Wanna drive my car? <laughs> In Kill Huggy Bear, Huggy tells the boys that the bar closes at 2 a.m. You want the deal, you do it our way. But it'll have to be after I close. Yeah, 2 o'clock in the morning. But the sign says, open all night. Now what are we supposed to believe? Hurry, get the perfect gift for that son or daughter, niece or nephew. But Huggy Bear doesn't stay in the bar business for long. He goes the entrepreneurial route with the first of his revolving gigs in The Hostages. What are you doing? Engaging in an American free enterprise system. In episode 18, it's all about mouse racing. You ever try to get 10 horses in a basement? And in the episode entitled Jojo. How's business, Hug? It's glow-in-the-dark crucifixes. Well, it ain't heaven. Starsky can't seem to get a handle on this cab door in Death Ride. It's but it's the art department that can seem to get a grip on Starsky's police radio. See here, it's white. But in episode three, it's black. And then white again. I've lost you. And while we're at it, let's look at that cab door one more time and slow-mo. Now, here's a mystery. In the fix, when the bad guys grab Hutch, we see his jacket thrown on the bed in a heap with the belt on top of it. But later, when Starsky goes looking for him, the jacket is neatly laid out and the belt is next to it. You tell him I want him in here in one hour and ready for duty. There's only one problem, Captain. What's that? I don't know where he is to tell him that. Now everyone knows an army moves on its stomach and TV is no different. In fact, when you're on the case, it's easy to work up an appetite. Let's see how Kraft Services handles that. Starsky, huh? How did you say they make hot dogs? Hot dogs? But as hard as TV production can be, there are many pleasures and discoveries to be made as well. Take it from these guys. Director Michael Schultz revved up his engines on Starsky and Hutch before he made the movie Car Wash. Ivan Dixon turned Starsky and Hutch director after all those years on Hogan's Heroes. Randall Kleiser got the guys in gear before he made the movie Grease. And Fernando, he was looking marvelous, directing episode number 14. Just stay cool, big fella, huh, comprendo? 
And there are plenty of soon-to-be famous faces in front of the camera, too. Suzanne Somers thought that two was company enough in episode one. <laughs> Biggs' Robert Loggia hit the small screen in episode four. And if you can't do it, I'm gonna find somebody who can. In episode 13, a pre-WKRP Gordon Jump. Hey, Ken, it's Vinny. Yeah, Vinny. A TV trio made the scene in episode 15. John Ritter of Three's Company, Lou Grant's cub reporter Linda Kelsey, and little Christy McNichol before she was in the family way. Can we deal? Deal? In episode 17, a pre-Dallas Steve Canale was on hand. And look out for steely Richard Keel in episode 18 before he went heavy metal as Jaws in the Bond series. <laughs> How do we get down from here? So the next time you're checking out your favorite show, look for the mismatched radios, the magic self-repairing cars, the soon-to-be breakout stars, and remember, TV may be harder than it looks, but that's what makes it so much fun to watch. You got anything else for us? No.